Now, in order to set the scene for the next algorithm, the Deutsch Joshua uh, algorithm, uh, I would like to read to you a, a little fun story uh, to warm you up for that. And this story is taken from one of the books that I recommended to you at the beginning of the course by Terry Rudolph, Q is for Quantum, um, which is really uh, entertaining to read and it's a very nice and uh, introduction to the basic idea of quantum computing with very, very little mathematics. And um, there's a, a, a little story about a bank robbery, which I would like to read to you and you can follow me while I read the story. To set the scene, imagine you are trying to rob a bank. When you finally tunnel into the vault, you find yourself in a room containing eight giant gold bars. You have inside information that this bank has many vaults and in any given vault, either all eight of the bars are fake or four are fake and four are genuine. The fake bars are very good. You cannot tell them apart from the genuine ones without extremely sophisticated laboratory scale equipment, which of course you cannot just carry around. The employees of the bank also cannot distinguish genuine bars from fake ones. Rather than give them a list of the genuine bar locations, which could be copied or stolen, the witty bank manager has installed in the corner of the vault one of our black and white ball computers labeled Archimedes. Every bar in the room has a location uniquely identified by a combination of black and white circles like this. And here you see uh, the upper graph, these are the eight gold bars, either genuine or fake. And the location has this, uh, each location has this code yeah, with three circles, which are either filled or not. Yeah. To check whether a particular bar is genuine or not, a bank employee drops three balls with colors corresponding to that bar's location into Archimedes and the fourth target ball, which starts off black. Yeah, so here you have this a little uh, machine, Archimedes, and say you want to check whether the uh, bar in the top right corner is genuine or fake. Yeah. Um, the bar in the top right is labeled with a white and two black circles uh, or disks. Then you insert into this machine uh, from the left a white ball and two black balls and then on the very right always a black ball. And this machine then thinks and works. Archimedes works in such a way that if the gold bar at the location corresponding to the input balls is genuine, then a knot is applied to the target ball. So if the target comes out white, then the employee knows that particular bar is genuine. If it remains black, it is fake. The three location balls just emerge the same color they entered, and so on. Imagine you know that this is how Archimedes works, but there is a snag. The time it takes for the balls to fall through Archimedes is very long, let's say an hour. Perhaps this is an extra layer of safety for the bank to thwart people like you. Or perhaps it is because inside Archimedes are a huge number of boxes executing some very complicated com uh, computation. 
Otherwise, possibly you would just smash Archimedes open to see if the information you need is easily accessible. You definitely do not have time to check more than one bar before you had better get the heck out of the vault. To make matters worse, you are part of a gang, which has busted open many of the vaults. The gang leader has declared that anyone who steals only fake bars will be executed, as they will have wasted valuable space in a getaway truck. It would seem the best thing you can do is pick one bar location at random and check if it is genuine or fake. If it is genuine, that's great. You know you are in a vault with four genuine bars, and so stealing all eight bars is worthwhile. If it is fake, however, you will still be unsure which type of vault you have entered. It could be of either type. So this is the story of the bank robbery. And you may have noticed that there are some cues that link the story to our mathematical problem or a generalization of the problem that we just considered. So you have these eight gold bars in the vault and you can just label them with natural numbers starting with zero, so from zero to seven in these would be decimal numbers or in binary representation yeah, with three digits from 000 to 111. And this corresponds to the white and uh, black dots next to the bars that were used in the story. Yeah, a white, uh, a white is a zero in binary representation and a black dot is a one in binary representation. Yeah. And then the, uh, uh, the story says that in a vault with eight bars, either all eight of them are fake or four fake and four genuine. Now, um, you can introduce a function f of x where x is the label of a given gold bar uh, it's like an indicator function and it returns zero if this bar is fake and it returns one if um, the bar is genuine yeah now for the bars in a given vault this function is either constant so all of them are fake and the values value of the function is zero yeah, for all possible values of x then the function is constant or the function is balanced and because in the second case you have the same number of fake bars and the genuine bars uh, and this means that the function is balanced. Yeah? So you have the same number of uh, x's for which the value of the function is zero as you have x's for which the value is one. Yeah? And then this is the generalization of this notion of a balanced function. It means that the two possible values of the function uh, occur with equal frequency. So um, you have, in mathematical terms, you have a situation similar to the one that we just considered. You have a function, a binary function. Yeah? If, you, if the input is, uh, are the three bits uh, that you use to label a gold bar, yeah? then this function maps uh, a bit string of length three to a single output bit yeah, 0 or 1. It indicates whether the bar is fake or genuine and we know the function is either constant or balanced.
Now, the difficulty here in this situation is that um, because this uh, mysterious Archimedes machine uh, takes an hour and you only have at most an hour to find out in what type of vault you are, you can really allow yourself to to use Archimedes only once. And this means you can call the function only once. Otherwise, you are screwed. Yeah? You are you risk your life. Yeah. So um, uh, this is the challenge. And I would like to show you that the Deutsch Joshua algorithm allows you to achieve just that. Yeah? So Archimedes, if Archimedes is a quantum computer, then you can do it. And if Archimedes just implements the Deutsch Joshua algorithm. Just want to show you that the um, basic structure is similar to the to Deutsch's algorithm that we discussed before. It's generalized in the sense that now we permit a Boolean function that has as its domain uh, an arbitrary, a sort of a bit string of arbitrary length, n. If you wanted to find out classically if, the, if this Boolean function is constant or balanced, well, there are two to the power n possible, different possible inputs, yeah, and um, classically you would just um, evaluate the function many times, yeah, and um, say you have inserted half the possible arguments half the possible values for your argument. So that would be two to the power n divided by two. And the values of the function were all identical. Then you, you can still not be sure if the function is constant or balanced, because it could be that by some coincidence, yeah, you just happened to pick all the inputs for which the function say is equal to zero. And for the other half, the value of the function is, is one. So you have to evaluate one more in order to be certain whether the function is constant or balanced. Yeah. So if you were lucky, then maybe already earlier, you encountered a different value of the function and then you know the function is um, is balanced but you if you have not then in order to be certain you need two to the power n divided by two plus one more function call um, until with certainty you can decide whether it's constant or balanced and you see uh, that classically this number of function calls grows exponentially with n so it grows exponentially with the um, length of the input bit string what i will show you next week is that the deutsch joshua algorithm like deutsch's algorithm that we discussed today will allow you to, to decide that question with just a single call of the oracle so with just a single function call and this is a first example where you have an exponential speed up yeah in the sense that classically you would need up to two to the power n divided by two plus one function calls and with this quantum machine just one 